In this video, I'm going to show you how to make stingers just like this, using only the ATEM, the media pool, the macros, and a new tool that I made called H2R Stingers. Let's take a look. So first up, this whole thing works by just using your ATEM setup, using the media pool, using macros, so you don't have to rely on any third-party services or softwares while you're using it in production. You can see here in my media pool, we have a collection of images that represent each frame of that transition. You can also see that I have a macro in my macro pool called run stinger, which can run that stinger. When I run this macro, a few things happen. There's a little bit of setup. Your DSK turns on. It cycles through those 10 images in your media pool. And then whenever the screen is full, it performs a cut operation. And then it cycles back down all of those images again and turns your DSK off at the end. As you can see, this happens pretty fast and the transition is very smooth just for those 10 images. It's quite nice. So first up, let's head into H2R Stingers where we can get started to choose a stinger, configure how it looks, and a few more things for our macro. Here on the site, you can see I have a little program preview set up and a multi-view style, so you can see how this is gonna look. You can take a look around here at which stinger you prefer. I was showing off this diagonal alt one a second ago, but you can have a different one. For example, I quite like these circle from center. But for now, I'll stick with the original diagonal. I can set a color for the transition down here. So before I was showing it in orange, but it could be red, it could be any color you want. Something like this, a quite a dark gray will work just fine for now. And then from there, you can decide how long the weight should be whenever the transition happens. So if I set this to zero, you'll see the stinger happens and opens instantly. Whereas of course, if I set this to something like 20 frames, it closes, waits for longer, and then opens again. So you have a little bit of control there over how it looks. And later in this video, we'll talk about the user weight option, which is also quite nice. And as I've shown before, pressing the sting button will simulate that stinger transition. So you can see it in action and how it's gonna look on your ATEM. I'll just leave all the other settings as default right now, but we will explore them all later in the video. From here, all I need to do is hit download and that downloads all the assets I need to make this transition work. Once downloaded, you'll want to extract all the files because it was a zip file that got downloaded. So I'll do that and open up the extracted file. You'll see in here there's an ATEM media pill folder and two XML files. In the folder, you can see a collection of images, which is what we saw before in the media pill. Going back a step, I'll just open up this macro file here. You can open that in a text editor, but for my use case, I like to open it up in a code editor. So here on the left-hand side, we have the code that I've downloaded from Hitch to our Stingers. And you can see if you're familiar with macros in the ATEM, this looks pretty similar. Let's also open up this media pool file. I'll just drag it over here, open that up, and you can see it is a media pool set up with stills, and then it links to each of those images in that ATEM media pool folder. Next up, we'll want to import all of this into the ATEM through the ATEM software control. I can open up the ATEM software control and choose file, and save as to save a snapshot of how my ATEM looks right now. I'll just call it Stinger. It is important to save this file in the same directory that you downloaded from Hitch to our Stingers. So I'll navigate to that and save this XML file in that folder. So here I am in that folder and I'll save the Stingers XML file in there. I only need two things right now. So I'll say select none and choose media pool and macros and save that. I'll just open up that Stinger XML file that I just saved in another code editor. And here it is, all of the XML file that I saved from my ATEM. The first thing I wanna do is add the media pool section. So if I just collapse this macro pool out of the way, and I'll just do a little bit of rearranging here and go back to the media pool XML file that I downloaded from hitch to our stingers. I can copy this, control C, and paste it into this other XML file. I'll just put that below the macro control section I'll just paste that in there and save the file. I also wanna grab the macro, so I'll copy all of that text, and then I'll open up my macro pool again. Just a quick note that the index number is pretty important here if you haven't played with this before. So going back over, we can see that I have index zero, index one, etc. in my file here. I'm just gonna close some of these down so I can take a look at what number this one should be. So I can put a, a number eight here, pasting that code in there, scrolling up, and I'll change the index to it. I'll also give this a different name because I already have a run stinger macro. I'll just call it stinger tutorial and save this file again. Now with my ATEM software control open, I'll want to restore that file into the ATEM. And here it is, 
stingers. Open that up. I'll leave both of these selected, media pull and macros, and hit restore. And what you notice there is that all the images loaded into the ATEM because the folder was in the right place. And if I open up my macros here, I can see I have this new macro called Stinger Tutorial. Just a quick note to say you can skip copy and pasting the macro pull section into your XML file and you can just drag and drop each of the images into the media pool if you want. It's a little bit slower but it's not too bad and it's pretty good to do that so you don't affect other images in your media pool if you have some in there already. So now I can run this macro heading over to run, recall and run and hitting the macro button. And there you go, it worked nicely. I'll click it again and back I go to the computer. All right, we're up and running with our stinger, but there's loads of fun stuff to still explore, and we'll get to that now. Oh, and just before we jump into more custom things, I wanna let you know there are packs available on the site to download and go even further into this stinger fun. Right now we have a few available, the stills pack, which is PNGs, MP4 pack, WebM pack, ProRes pack, and then the everything pack, which includes all of the previously mentioned packs. H2R Stingers is a free app. Go ahead and use it for all your productions. There's no need to purchase any of these packs if you don't feel like you want them or need them. But if you want them or you wanna support the project, go ahead and purchase a pack. Otherwise, enjoy the tool and let's get back to the content. So I'm back over on H2R Stingers here and I wanna explore some settings and I'll open this little cog wheel so we can dig in a little bit deeper. Here you can choose what DSK to use for your stinger. So it's one by default, but some ATEMs have four, so you can crank that up to four. Next is the color generator. Again, there's multiple of those on the ATEM, and that's what chooses what color to show during the transition. So you can choose that here, one or two. The macro index is what we looked at before. You can just change this in this tool, and then when you download your macro, it will already have this number in it. Next up is the media player. Again, some ATEMs have up to four media players, so you can choose a different one if you want to. Next is use stills. You can use whatever stills you want in your ATEM media pool. You might have only up to 20, but you might have beyond that, so feel free to use different stills so as not to overwrite other images you have in there. And then finally, we have this user weight option, and let's take a look at what that looks like. User weight lets you run a macro on your ATEM and then hold at a certain point and wait for you to do something before the macro resumes. I have a stinger with wait macro here, and if I hit that, you'll see what happens. The stinger kicks in, and now it's waiting. If I just turn off my DSK real quick and show you what's happening behind the scenes, you'll see that the macro is waiting for me to resume. The play button is flashing, and whenever I'm ready, I can start that again. Okay, I'll turn my DSK back on, press play, and the macro finishes. Over here on H2R Stingers, I have the user weight set up. And whenever I run the sting, you can see the same thing happens. It fills the screen, it waits, and the sting button is now flashing, waiting for me to do something. I'll press it again, and the transition completes. You can grab one of those macros, keep it in your macro pool, and use that. Maybe a video finishes and your talent isn't on screen yet, and you can run that one instead of the other one. And just hold, wait for it to finish, and then resume the macro whenever everything's set up and ready to go. Let's dig into two more ways to customize this with a custom image or a custom video. First, image. First, I'll drag an image that I wanna use into my media pool. Put it here, it's this here to record plate. One thing to note here is you'll need two media players on your ATEM to do this exact setup. So as you can see on my ATEM Mini Extreme, I have two, so I can use two. At this point, you wanna make sure your image is moved into your media player too. We'll make one change to our macro file to make this work. Here's the macro file that I exported previously for the Stinger tutorial, you can see it here. And what I'll do is make one change on this line down here. In downstream key fill input, instead of setting that to my color generator, color one, I'll want to set that to my media player two. I'll just type in media player two and save this file. Now, of course, I can clean up even more and remove all of this color generator stuff and a few other things below, but for the purpose of this video, I'll leave the rest as is. With that file saved, I'll head back into my ATEM Mini Extreme, restore from that file, and then just choose macros this time. Hit restore and let it restore in. Opening up my macros here, I can see my Stinger tutorial, and when I run that, it transitions through that image and back to me. Back to the computer again, through that image. So it's pretty simple, pretty easy, and a nice little small change to make it even more customizable for your production. Next, we'll do a custom video. And here you can see on input eight of my switcher, I have Playout B running, and it's playing this video back on an endless loop. 
I want to make a small change to my XML file, just like I did a minute ago with the image, but this time pointing it at input 8. So I'm back in that XML file, and instead of setting the downstream key fill input to media player 2, I'll set that up for camera 8. Camera 8 here is pointing at input number 8 on my item. That's just what they call it here on the XML file. And now with that file saved as well, I can open up file restore as we've done several times already. Open that, choose the macros only, hit restore. Once it's fully restored, I can hit that macro and as you can see, it goes to my video and comes back to me or I can go back to the computer again. This can be super useful for having something running all the time and just using it as a cutaway or something to go to during your stinger. Or you can use that with user weight and then play and hold on that video for longer if you really need to. All right, I hope you find all of that useful and helpful and you're able to use it in one of your productions coming up. Let me know how that goes. If you have any issues with it, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.